Hello everyone. So in this video lecture, I shall be covering congenital defects of the heart. To get a better understanding of these congenital heart defects, I would like you to refer to the earlier videos covering heart embryology, in which we covered in detail the basic development of the heart, both on a macroscopic and at a molecular level. Without further ado, let's just get right into this pie. So congenital heart disease is a general term designating abnormalities of the heart or the great vessels that are present at birth. So most congenital heart disease arises from faulty embryogenesis during gestational weeks 3 through 8. Here in this table, we have a nutshell overview of the development of the heart and the associated effects in the form of a timeline. As you can see, we have the development of the primary heart field, development of the heart tube, atrial ventricular canal into cardiac cushions, the secondary heart field, the outflow tract that is the conotruncus and then we have ultimately the aortic archer. And here in this table we have a natural overview of the various factors that can lead to the development of congenital heart diseases. Discuss in detail these factors when we shall discuss the etiology and pathogenesis of congenital heart disease. The most severe of these congenital abnormalities are incompatible with intrauterine life but the majority of these effects affect individual chambers or discrete regions of the heart. They are often compatible with embryological maturation and eventual life birth. In this category of congenital heart diseases, we have septal defects, we have unilateral obstructions and outflow tract abnormalities. Septal defects or we can call them holes in the heart include ventricular septal defect and the atrial septal defect. Unilateral obstructions or stenotic lesions can occur either at the level of the cardiac valve or they can occur globally in the chamber which we shall study in the form of hypoplastic heart syndrome. And Lastly, we have the outflow tract abnormalities such as detransposition of great vessels. We have ventricular inversion or we can also call it L-transposition of great vessels. As mentioned in the previous video, left-right patterning through the laterality pathway which we studied in embryology that was given by Pitex to nodal pathway. So it plays an important role in these abnormalities. These forms of congenital heart disease usually produce clinically important manifestation only after birth when there is a major change from the fetal to the perinatal circulation. The incidence of these congenital heart disease approximately is about 5% and the most common congenital heart defects are we have the ventricular septal defect that accounts for about 42% of all the cases. We have atrial septal defect with 10% pulmonary stenosis about 8% and then we have the patent ductus arteriosus. Now we shall proceed to study about the etiology and pathogenesis of these congenital heart diseases. Sporadic genetic abnormalities are the major known causes of PhDs. They can take the form of single gene mutations or small chromosomal losses and additions and deletion of whole chromosomes like in trisomies and monosomies. So most of the mutated or lost portions of the genes are transcription factors and other secondary messenger molecules which play a role in major pathways involved in the development of in the heart. So these major pathways include, we have the Wnt beta catenin pathway, we have the sonic hedgehog pathway, vascular endothelial growth factor pathway, the TGF beta pathway, we have the fibroblast growth factor pathway and we have the notch pathway. Since affected if patients are heterozygous for such mutations or deletions, it follows that a 50% reduction or even less in the activity of these factors may be sufficient to derange cardiac development. We shall discuss the various causes of these congenital defects in three headings. We have chromosomal disorders which include aneuploidy or loss of certain regions of the chromosomes that are deletions. We have single gene disorders or single gene mutation disorders and we have the environmental factors that contribute to the pathogenesis of congenital heart diseases. Now discussing the chromosomal disorders that are responsible for congenital heart diseases. At first we have Down syndrome. Down syndrome is the most common cause of syndromic CHD and it contributes to about 40% of syndromic causes of congenital heart diseases. In this we usually have a trisomy 21 due to non-disjunction during maternal gam gametogenesis. There is usually defects of the endocardial cushions and hence the accompanying abnormalities such as atrial septal defect, AV valve malformations. The second disorder that are included in these chromosomal disorders is Turner syndrome which is usually characterized in about 57% cases with the monosomy of the X chromosome in phenotypic females. The major structural abnormalities that occur is the coarctation of the aorta and a bicuspid aortic valve. Third major cause is the George syndrome which is also known as the chromosome 22q11.2 deletion. Major causes of the abnormalities accompanying this is the loss of the transcription factor TBX1 which plays a major role in the development of structures from the third and fourth pharyngeal pouches 
such as facial structures, thymus, the parathyroid, and the fourth branchial arch. The syndrome is therefore associated with multiple deficits memorable through this mnemonic known as CATCH22, in which C stands for cardiac abnormalities, A stands for abnormal feces, that is the facial dysmorphia, T stands for thymic hypoplasia, C stands for cliff palate, it stands for hypocalcemia and 22 stands for the deletion that is often present and at last we have some trisomy such as trisomy 13 and 18 which is also associated with cardiac malformation now we shall proceed and discuss the single gene disorders that are responsible for congenital heart diseases at first we have noonan syndrome and noonan syndrome second most common syndromic cause of congenital heart diseases in noonan we have a single gene mutation either in ptpn11 that is tyrosine protein phosphatase non-receptor type 11. We have we can have mutation in KRAS, which is a second messenger molecule in the ras raf mec erg pathway. We can have mutation in SOS, or also known as the son of seven list, which also plays a role in the ras raf mec erg pathway. And we can also have mutations in RAF1. So the major defects that accompany Noonan syndrome is usually pulmonary valve stenosis atrial septal defects and ventricular septal defects. Secondly, we have allogyl syndrome, which is characterized by mutation in JAG1 and NOTCH2. JAG1 is a transmembrane ligand for NOTCH receptors. And NOTCH2 is one of the four NOTCH receptors that are present in human vertebrates. So the major cardiac abnormalities that accompany allogyl syndrome is pulmonary artery stenosis and tetralogy of phallus. The fourth cause can be Holteram syndrome in which there is a mutation in TBX5 which is a transcription factor that is playing a role in septation. So we will have malformation such as atrial septal defects and ventricular septal defects. So the fifth major single gene mutation disorder that is responsible for congenital heart diseases is Marfan syndrome in which there is a mutation in the profibrillin 1 gene that is present on 15q chromosome. The basic pathogenesis behind Marfan syndrome is that due to the mutation in the profibrillin 1 gene that encodes the protein responsible for formation of microfibrils. Microfibrils sequester the amount of TGF beta that is present in the extracellular space. And if we have a mutation in these microfibrils, we will have accumulation of TGF beta and TGF beta can further lead to activation of matrix metalloproteinases that can lead to leverage of collagen. So that can lead to some congenital heart diseases like coarctation of the aorta, aortic dissection and mitral valve prolapse. And the sixth, the major cause of these single gene disorders is CHARGE syndrome in which CHARGE is an acronym for major clinical symptoms or signs that are associated with it. We have C for coloboma. Coloboma is a loss of a portion of the iris or the retina. H stands for heart defects. A stands for atresia of the nasal cone. R stands for retardation. G stands for genital and or urinary abnormalities. And E stands for ear abnormalities or deafness. So the major reason behind this CHARGE syndrome is a mutation in the gene for CHD7 in which CHD7 is a helicate. Third major causes are environmental factors in which first we have the congenital rubella infection, patent ductus arteriosus, we have pulmonary artery stenosis and we have septal defects. The second reason of these environmental factors that contribute to CHD is the fetal alcohol syndrome, which can lead to defects such as ventricular septal defects, patent ductus arteriosus, and tetralogy of phallic. The third reason can be lithium exposure, which could be as a result of treatment for manic disorders. So the characteristic disorder of exposure to lithium is Epstein anomaly. Epstein anomaly is characterized by displacement of the tricuspid valve towards the apex of the right ventricle. This results in an increase in the size of the right atrium and a decrease in the size of the right ventricle. Most of the various structural anomalies in congenital heart disease can be organized into three major categories. We have malformations causing a left to right shunt. We have malformations causing a right to left shunt and we have malformation causing an obstruction. A shunt is an abnormal communication between chambers of blood vessels. Abnormal channels permit blood flow down pressure gradients either from the left to the right side, that is from the systemic to the pulmonary circulation, or we can have vice versa, that is the pulmonary to the systemic circulation. So the major causes of the right to left shunt, we can memorize it by a memory aid, that is five T's, in which the T's stand for the initial letter of these conditions. We have truncus arteriosus persistent. We have transposition of the great arteries. We have tricuspid atresia. We have tetralogy of phallate. 
and we have total and anomalous pulmonary venous return. So the major clinical features that are encountered in this right to left shunt is due to the bypassing of the pulmonary circulation, which are result in cyanosis and result in hypoxemia. It can also result in a paradoxal embolism in which an emboli from the veins, that is thromboembolism, can cross to the systemic and lodge in a systemic blood vessel. We can also have clubbing, that is also known as hypertrophic osteoarthropathy. And we can also have a polycythemia to compensate for this hypoxia. The reason of clubbing, which is a major clinical sign that we encounter while seeing patients. So the reason for clubbing is in the normal circulation, whenever the megakaryocytes are released from the bone marrow, it is the job of the lungs and especially the pulmonary capillaries to break down these megakaryocytes so that they don't get into the systemic circulation. In a right to left shunt, these megakaryocytes can bypass the breakdown within the pulmonary circulation and, ent and enter the systemic circulation. When they are present in the systemic circulation, they are trapped within the capillary beds within the extremities where they release two growth factors that is platelet derived growth factor and we have vascular endothelial growth factor which can both promote connective tissue hypertrophy and can increase the capillary permeability as we know vascular endothelial growth factor can promote transite. Now discussing the left to right shunt, the major causes of the left to right shunt include atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect, a patent ductus arteriosus or we can have a patent for amino whale. So the clinical features that are associated with the left to right shunt, initially the left to right shunt is not associated with cyanosis but whenever there is a left to right shunt and the blood volume increases and the pressure increases inside the right side of the circulation to maintain the normal distal capillary pressure and the venous pressures in the pulmonary circulation, the muscular pulmonary arteries respond by undergoing medial hypertrophy and vasoconstriction which will ultimately lead to a decrease in the pressure that will be found ultimately in the permanent circulation but this has its downside as we see in hypertension uh, the increase in the pressure and the ultimate hypertrophy that undergoes in these vessels can lead to irreversible obstructive intimal lesion due to the increased blood flow and the pressure to compensate for it the right ventricle undergoes hypertrophy and as the pulmonary vascular resistance approaches systemic levels, that is, increases from its normal value of 0.14 PRU to increase to about 1 PRU, that is, matching with the systemic levels, the increase in pressure will lead to a reversal of the gradient. So an initial left to right shunt that was facilitated by increased amount of pressures in the left side of the circulation will become a right to left shunt as the pressure in the right side of the circulation increases. Left to right shunt becomes a right to left shunt and this results in Eisenmenger syndrome which is characterized by late cyanosis, clubbing and ultimately polycythemia. And at last we have malformations causing an obstruction. So obstructive congenital heart disease occurs whenever there is an abnormal narrowing of the chambers, valves or the blood vessels. These include coarctation of the aorta, they include pulmonary artery stenosis, and also the aortic valvular stenosis. A complete obstruction is also known as an atresia. 